It is my pleasure and honor to introduce this session entitled TAVI Outcomes in Women. This is a very interesting topic. It's not because women are minorities, because, but because I think that women should be considered differently in our current practice. So I will go directly by introducing first Professor Sabine uh, Bleisefer from Heart and Diabetes Center in Badenhausen in Germany. And Nicole Karam, Dr. Nicole Karam, which is an interventional cardiologist from uh, European Hospital in Paris, France. I'm going to hand it to you, Nicole, first, and then I'm sure we will have a fantastic session. Yeah, I'm sure too. Thank you, Thomas. But um, before going into Tavia, I would like to start with a question to Sabine first and try to know more about the outcomes of uh, surgical aortic valve replacement in women. Sabine, what do you get for us? Thank you. So we have a couple of data about that. Um, these are all retrospective studies um, investigating gender-related outcomes after surgical aortic valve replacement. Um, female patients are uh, represented in 30 to 40 percent of those patients. So first of all, patients, uh, female patients present differently to surgical aortic valve replacement. They are older. They, in some studies, they have more comorbidities, um, especially higher NYHA class um, or lower hemoglobin and um, higher uh, risk scores. They, of course, have a smaller body size, smaller body surface area, smaller body mass index, and they also present with smaller aortic valve areas and higher gradients and a smaller aortic uh, root anatomy. Um, interestingly, they um, less often have an impaired left ventricular function and they less often present with endocarditis. Next, there are a couple of procedural differences when looking at surgical aortic valve replacement. Um, because patients are older, female patients receive more bioprosthesis, they receive smaller valves. Um, and we also saw in one study um, from my former center in Munich that they receive less partial stenotomy. We uh, hypothesized that that was uh, due to the fact that they are older and sicker. And uh, finally, they have more um, surgical aortic root enlargements during the procedure. And concerning the outcomes, um, there are some conflicting data when looking at mortality. Um, when just um, investigating raw data, in most studies, the surgical mortality risk, um, early mortality or 30 day mortality, is up to twofold um, increased uh, comparing to male patients. Um, but when adjusting for um, baseline characteristics, especially for age and comorbidities, in most studies, this difference um, uh, is resolved. And um, when looking at late mortality um, among the studies, um, there is no difference between male and female patients. There are also some other um, outcome differences. Female patients um, have more patient prosthesis mismatch. So in mismatch studies, uh, female gender is usually identified as a risk factor for patient prosthesis mismatch. In another study, um, we saw they have less wound healing disturbances than male patients. And uh, I also found a different finding that there are different predictors for mortality among male and female patients. For example, a very small valve, 21 millimeters and smaller, is a risk factor for mortality only in male patients and not in female patients. So um, these are um, uh, studies that are um, quite old sometimes, and um, we now have another uh, treatment option for uh, patients with aortic valve stenosis. And um, I would like to ask you, what do we know today about um, gender-related differences in TAVI outcomes? And um, is there a difference between TAVI and surgical aortic valve replacement concerning gender differences? Yeah, indeed. Uh, thank you, Sabine, for this uh, great uh, summary. So if we look at the TAVI results, they are very encouraging. Most of our data come from retrospective studies, again, if you want to compare, compare but we still, we have the WinTAVI registry that prospectively included women uh, in several countries. And it gave uh, some very reassuring results regarding the safety profile and also the outcomes. So uh, the one year death or stroke were, uh, rates were around 13.9%. Uh, the safety endpoint was reaching 14% of patients. Overall, the results were very good. Now, if we try to compare women 
to men in other studies. Uh, so um, we have the, a large meta-analysis of uh, over 47,000 patients uh, worldwide where around 49% of cases were in women. And here what, what we can see that there is, there is a net benefit around, among women in all cause mortality at one year. So again, good results for women, women very encouraging. And if we go to surgery and uh, try to compare what's happening for uh, Intavi compared to, uh, to surgery, if you look at the partner study, we see that we had lower procedural mortality in Tavi versus surgery. It was of 6.8% with Tavi versus 13.1% in surgery. And this was maintained throughout follow-up. So very reassuring again. The rate of bleeding was of course lower in the Tavi group. I mean, I said, I, of course, but we could have been worried about the vascular access in women with small artery, but here again, it was not an issue. And it was very safe to perform studies among, among women compared to surgery. There is another meta-analysis uh, this time, including uh, 1,700 women, women. And again, what we saw is uh, that we had a decreased mortality at two years compared to what was happening to men, with men, uh, with the surgery, sorry. So obviously, TAVI is a good option for women. Again, as you mentioned, you have this uh, increased risk of uh, mismatch with, uh, with, TAVI, with uh, women. But what we saw with TAVI is uh, with supraannular uh, valves, we do have good results. We do have a gradient that is acceptable. But I guess Thomas has more to say about this. Right, Thomas? Yeah, so thank you, Nicole. I mean, I, I, I would take it over after what uh, you and Sabine have been mentioning. I mean, just to put this into perspective, I mean, uh, TAVI in women is a daily challenge. And it's not only a trendy subject that some people are trying to, to be involved in. Uh, two main things, baseline characteristics show that women are sicker, more fragile, and uh, the, that will make the surgical practice itself much more challenging. Sabine has been mentioning the need in many cases for uh, uh, enlargement of the analyst. And this is not an easy surgery for those who have tried to do it. And you have shown uh, on the other hand that some non-randomized trials, not necessarily a prospective also have been showing a clear benefit in women. So I'm gonna share with you this very important study so this study is entitled Aortic Valve Replacement in Women with Small Aortic Analy. And uh, we involved in this study women that have been enrolled in Sirtavi and Evolute Low Risk Trials. So these were two uh, randomized control prospective studies in intermediate and low risk patients. And we looked at women who have had uh, a diameter of less or equal to 23 millimeter. Uh, we looked at the presence of the PPM, but also at uh, bioprosthetic valve dysfunction uh, as defined uh, by many criteria. You will see it later here. So first thing is that the baseline characteristics in this study showed no significant difference in age, BSA, STS score, and YHA, uh, and other risk factors. The clinical outcomes at uh, one month showed clearly that, uh, and the uh, uh, Nicole has been talking about this, a bit more major, major vascular complications in the TAVI group, but all the other factors uh, like acute kidney injury, like aortic valve readmission, and this is a very important point, have been in favor of TAVI. Of course, there was pacemaker higher implant rate, but remember this was before the cusp overlap technique. More importantly, and this will probably condition the durability of the valves, is the benefit of having better hemodynamic outcomes. So look at this slide. This slide shows clearly that we have had better EOA, significantly better from the day of implant and up to one year uh, follow-up. And we have had lower gradients, significantly lower gradients from the day of implant. And this was sustainable over time. PPM, we have seen that also in women who have had TAVI versus surgery, they have had significantly less moderate and severe patient prosthesis mismatch. And this is what we wanted to show with this study. Uh, total aortic regurgitation was no significantly difference between groups. That means that now we have reached a point where TAVR 
efficacy is here to stay. This is a very uh, original and uh, you need to be reported, uh, extracted from the study also that the Doppler velocity index at one year, you know, the, the higher it is, the better it will be. It was significantly higher from the day of implant till one year in the TAVR group in women with small annuli versus the surgical group. So in conclusion, the study, and you will have the chance to, uh, to uh, see more data and more uh, results in the late cl clinical uh, trials uh, presentation. It showed clearly that we have had better clinical results at one year, fewer readmission, better hemodynamic performance at one year, significant greater uh, EOA and DVI, lower mean gradients, and less moderate and severe patient prosthesis mismatch. So there is definitely a benefit to implant the TAVI in women uh, following the, the conclusions of this study. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Very interesting results. Do you think that those studies, this, this study is gonna change our way of looking at uh, the TAVI in women or at aortic stenosis in women overall? I mean, you know, Nicole, I mean, we needed some data to support uh, uh, this observation that we, we know, I mean, so, so Sabine and myself are hybrid uh, surgeons. Uh, so we do TAVI as we do surgery. And we had this feeling that TAVI is, could be much better uh, than surgery in many women. And this is, a, this is the first randomized extracted data that shows the following. Uh, so I think uh, this will pre uh, pre is preceding also two other randomized uh, control trials that are coming, but this is definitely will make the field move forward. Thank you, Tama. Very encouraging summary from you. So basically, we are very willing to perform more and more TAVI among women. But I don't know what's your opinion, Sabine. Is, uh, do you think we have more data to wait for? Are you aware of any upcoming studies that we should look forward to? Thank you, Tama, for showing us this data. Um, they still um, show only outcomes of one uh, transcatheter heart valve. Maybe we need more data, um, comparative data for several heart valves. So um, we are all aware there is the SMART study upcoming uh, comparing um, small uh, patients with small annually, male and female patients, and we expect um, the greatest pro proportion will be female patients comparing a, a safe expandable versus a balloon expandable valve. So this will also give us um, the direction for treatment of aortic stenosis patients in the future. Sabine, I, I totally agree with you. However, I, if we don't, enough, we, have, we don't have enough data so far, we have consistent cumulated data. And this uh, study is the confirmation that TAVI in women should be considered differently, especially if we take into consideration the lower risk shift with the need for better hemodynamics. And we know that hemodynamics is a condition to get better durability as we can see it, as you know. So a uh, smart trial will look at all small annuli, but this data extracted from a woman uh, subpopulation is really very important. And I think this is the opportunity to put, to say the following, indication uh, of TAVI in women should also put in the confine of a heart team. And wherever we have any uh, uh, doubt about the outcomes in terms of fragility, uh, surgical difficulties, uh, and to uh, quicker the, the, the release from hospital, I think the heart team should consider uh, implanting self-expandable supraanular device in a woman. Very interesting point, Thomas. Thank you for bringing, bringing this up. Indeed, today it will be difficult to choose the correct uh, management for an aortic stenosis if we want to go through heart valve teams. So uh, to sum up, we've seen a very interesting session uh, with, uh, at the beginning, uh, important data regarding the surgical outcomes, which are very good, but uh, we still have this uh, mismatch, prosthesis mismatch, and the lead for other enlargement, which was not performed systematically. So this was the little dark spot, let's say, in the surgical aspect. And then we've seen that we have good results with, uh, with TAVI among women, which are very reassuring, and even some comparison that is 
retrospective, but it's again, it's giving more some important data regard, regarding the feasibility and good results of TAVI versus surgery. And then Toma, you gave us some very, very interesting results. And I wonder to what, at the, to what at the amount they will really change our upcoming management of aortic stenosis. And maybe as you say, consider at some point TAVI as uh, the first choice among women. Of course, the need for hard valve team and the need for a discussion to do what's the, to, to choose what's the best procedure, but also what's the best valve for the patient is very important again. So thanks, thank you all for attending and thank you Tama for Sabine yeah. and Sabine for this very interesting session. Thank you very much. We enjoyed it. Bye-bye.